Hey friends, welcome back to another weekly energy video uh, where I talk about the collective astrology, the transits of the planets and the solar bodies up in the sky. Just like the ancient kings and queens, you're going to get some uh, insight as to what is happening up there and how that affects life here on Earth. Um, this is a general reading, so it doesn't necessarily have to resonate with every single person out there, but the hope is that you find something that does resonate and that is helpful for you in the week ahead. So let's talk about the upcoming week. Um, March 20th through the 26th. Yeah, we're entering airy season and finally spring. Spring is sprunging. <laughs> spring is coming, man. I'm so excited for this fresh energy to be coming in. Sun moves into Aries at the same time it is sextile Pluto. This is about overcoming fear, personal destiny revealed, undergoing or illuminating a regenerative, regenerative process. Okay, and that, my friends, is also the energy of Pluto moving into Aquarius as well, uh, midweek or at the end of the week. A whole new set of ethics, injection of new energy into all things Aquarius. Um, the qualities of Aquarius being society, innovation, technology, etc. Prepare for transformations in these sectors and also prepare for observing how power is moving in and through these sectors as well. So... Preparing to le prepare to learn new skills. Prepare to learn new skills. And then at the end of the week, Mars moves into Cancer. Mars will spend three months in Cancer starting on the 25th where it's in its fall. So Mars experiences complicated emotions when it's in Cancer. We want to express our desires, but not at the risk of exposure or uncertainty. So Cancer is giving a lot of its qualities to Mars, which is to, no, Mars is normally ambitious and aggressive, and Cancer is, a, can be aggressive in its protective state, in the way that it goes and protects the things that it cares about. So we might be feeling extra sensitive. Um, we may have cause, you know, I don't want to say doubt, but we may be feeling the extra sensitivity of putting ourselves out there as we move towards a future that is um, orienting more towards community care and finding our unique roles within a system that prioritizes community care. This is a challenging placement, but it makes the natal Mars and Cancer placements, so everybody who is born with this placement of Mars and Cancer, quite strong. So you yourself have this placement, you may know what to do with this energy, you may understand what's going on. Uh, or if you have friends with this placement, uh, maybe there's something you can learn from the way that they um, process challenging or complicated emotions. It's possible. Mm, throughout the week, the moon is in Aries, right? We have the new moon in Aries, the very first new moon of the astrological year when we are birthing something completely new, completely different for ourselves, as is evidenced by Pluto transit into Aquarius and last week's uh, major transits uh, or earlier this month, Saturn into Pisces and some of the big, some of the other big transits here. Mm, you can go back and rewatch some of those earlier videos to get a recap of what those was about. So the moon is, starts in Aries, moves through Taurus, and we, we end up with a sort of Taurus into Gemini um, moon weekend. Taurus rules the throat, and Gemini is communicative. So right as Mars is moving into Cancer, we're also having highlighted our collective communication centers so it may be a goal the fo this coming weekend to keep communications clear and keep desires clear, right? Despite the vulnerability. Because this Pluto moving into Aquarius is going as a huge transit. Pluto will be in Aquarius for the next 20 years. But before it does that, 
Um, this this year it will still come back into Capricorn. It will retrograde. So Pluto and Aquarius for the next three months before it comes back into Capricorn till the end of the year. And then next January we settle in for like that 20 year cycle. And Mars is in Cancer also for the next three months. So this is going to be, this is the beginning of a very auspicious period of time where we are being challenged to live, to step into and live within our integrity of who we feel we really are, and who we feel we are becoming, and the challenge of the, that gradual process. All right, Pluto and Aquarius is like generational, long-term. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius was like 1700s. Be patient with yourself as the gradual changes are made, upgrades are being made to you on an individual level, to the collective on a much greater level, larger scale. Um, in other news, as I shuffle, oh, Ace of Pentacles, I love to see that <laughs> as I'm going to tell you my plans. I'm starting a meditation accountability group. Well, in other words, a Reiki, group Reiki sort of event. I think I mentioned it in last week's video. It's happening at Miss Ellis Healing Kitchen here in Chicago in person. But, or, and, I'm also going to make it available online. So, if you just want to drop into a space, have a have a space to drop into weekly. I haven't set the future dates yet, but this is my vision is I want to have a weekly place for people to gather where we can talk about some of uh, the astrology energy, um, use that to find a theme, to find a balance of um, things to process or work with, set an intention and then have a Reiki assisted guided meditations. I am studying the Japanese art of Zen Buddhism. You know, Reiki is a Japanese healing modality and Zazen is Japanese style or Buddhist style of uh, breath awareness meditation. It's the most basic skill we can have is understanding how to drop into an awareness of self mindfulness techniques that we should all have and yet we don't until we cultivate it for ourselves. So that's my goal is to uh, host, host a gathering, cultivate a space where we can all work on that together. And so it is an accountability group the way I see it. All right. And you don't have, it's not something you sign up for as a package deal. It's not something that you have to commit to long term. It's just whenever you're available and you want to do it, you can come and join us. I'll drop the link below. All right, we have the Eight of Wands, sorry, Eight of Swords and the Seven of Swords, back to back in reverse. So this is coming out of self-limiting beliefs and the desire for reform, this desire to do something differently, to think differently. Hmm? Page of Wands, Ace of Cups, The Fool. Well, oh, there's a lot of eights. Sorry, to continue, there's the Page of Wands, Ace of Cups, and the Fool, Nine of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, sorry, that's the Seven of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, Eight of Wands. The pattern will show up again until you've learned something from it. And it appears to be that this lesson may have something to do with um, putting energy into investing time into something that isn't producing necessarily the result that we want. Um, because I want to relate this back to the th this theme of like freedom, mental freedom, internal freedom, like changing the way we think, changing the way we think about um, 
ultimately changing our beliefs is sort of what this is like want a desire to change how we feel about the world of what is possible and what its limitations actually are maybe we want to see beyond certain limitations um, as a potential desire is what I see here is like um, work-life balance or wanting to live the life you've always wanted but then there's some dissonance around or, di or distraction around that and that distraction is this pattern potentially of either negative self-talk or you know the seven of swords is about strategy and so when I think about the transit of Pluto um, into Aquarius and prior to that the Pluto in Capricorn Pluto and Capricorn you know Pluto is power and power struggles Capricorn is ambitious and so we've seen over the last 20 years the way that corporations have really grown and the way that um, culturally in America um, how things have been is we want an edge over somebody else and that's what makes us feel like we're successful or accomplishing something but that's no longer the paradigm as in that is the paradigm that is changing and shifting and so what is going to be the new paradigm I think that if you're honest with yourself about one several things three things actually one the patterns that seem to keep repeating in your life, like taking a critical look at why certain things keep showing up for you, your unique lessons. Two, um, your um, desires and their those intentions behind certain desires. I'm taking a critical look at why is it we want certain things? Do we want it because somebody else has it and it seems to be working for them? Is there a process or a method that we've been employing because we've been told that's how it's supposed to work versus um, administering care to our internal feelings about this is what I really want in life and you know, who cares what other people think? This is what I know is on my path, right? The difference between those two things. Um, and then three, well, I guess I kind of said it already, but yeah, like three, th the life that you feel is for you, that you feel you deserve, that you can imagine if you're dreaming big and imagining a life outside of any current restriction that you can imagine that serves you and helps you become helps you to be the person you want to be for yourself and for your community, for your family. W what is that vision? I see resistance into moving into that, but th the opportunities for learning those things and um, tapping into your intuition, unlocking those limiting beliefs, it's all here. The potential for that is all here. But there are patterns and distractions which are in the way um, in the sense that when we're not thinking and working intentionally about uh, intentionally with integrating those things, that's when we find ourselves in patterns of um, investing energy into something that isn't quite working out, like it doesn't have the outcome that we produce or the, the, the vision isn't grounded in something real and therefore it's not producing some fruit uh, we're not listening to the subconscious messages um, we have about our true intentions behind certain behavior. I think that there is a bit of a lack mentality or like a, not a lack mentality, but a materialistic tendency, which is fine. I mean, this is how we've been raised culturally, is to say, if I don't have this or that, if I have less than another person, then inherently I'm, I have less. If I have less things, then therefore I am less of a person or, you know, but, but for me personally, I, I'm really into uh, minimalism and something I struggle with 
a lot is feeling like I have too, too many things. Um, and I try to stay away from that kind of belief, changing my belief or thinking to say like, I am truly grateful for everything that I have and everything that I'm able to have in my life. Because gratitude makes, helps the energy to flow in a forward direction. It's not that I want less things, is I want less distraction and more intentionality. I want less things so I could feel more gratitude for everything that is in that I do have in my life. Maybe that's why I travel so much, is to put myself in uncomfortable situations where I have to learn to be with myself and the things that I do have on me, like camping, like backpacking. Live off of what you got in your backpack for a few days, you'll come back totally changed. That's why I want to do my first retreat ever that I host uh, in a camping situation. So if you're outdoorsy, or even if you're not outdoorsy, we can teach you how to be prepared um, for outdoor, short-term outdoor living, like a weekend or a week or something. Yeah, I still see some, a little bit of resistance to stepping into that. And, you know, maybe I'm going to read a little bit about this because this really feels like something I was writing earlier. Remind yourself of all the good and meaningful progress you have made so far and step fully into being that person. Be fully that person who's in transition. Be fully that person who's learning. Spend time integrating. It's okay that you don't have things figured out or that you feel a bit lost, that you haven't mastered being the person you want to be. You are learning how to be that person. So advice for the following week, ground your vision in reality. Have a vision, write it down. Ground your vision in something that's real, that's tangible within you and not based in materialistic or um, cultural trends or desires. Forget about those things. What is it that truly helps you feel, um, makes you feel inspired? What fills your cup, makes you feel like you have a lot of love to give, that makes helps you overflow? What is it that makes you, helps you feel more trusting in the universe um, and in your own ability to catch yourself um, as you move forward in the spring season with this new moon in Aries injecting a lot of freshness? What's going to help you move forward with confidence? Remember, that Mar this Mars and Cancer transit's going to be challenging, or it can be challenging for some people. Um, anybody who's got a f who has major placements in fixed signs, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, if you are any of those fixed signs may have more of a challenge with the changes that are happening. What is going to help you cultivate gratitude? Those are the things that are going to help move things along, Eight of Wands. We are progressing along. Because look, even on the bottom here, there's another Eight of Pentacles. So we're progressing in, in many aspects of life. Seven, Eight of Pentacles. Seven, Eight of Swords. Eight, Nine of Wands. This is about trusting yourself, trusting your uniqueness, your unique desire, you, your unique plan, but grounding it in reality to me means you're being honest about those things within yourself, the way that you feel, the actual desires that you have. There was like another quote or um, I don't even know where I found this. I think I was just scrolling and I found it once. I could never find it again. And so I just sort of recreated it and wrote it on my board. Um, it goes, if it wasn't possible, you wouldn't have the desire. And if you didn't already have what it takes, you wouldn't have the opportunity. So go forward, destroy those self-limiting beliefs because you can change your mind. Absolutely. You can change what you believe if that's what you want. Thanks so much for being here as always. I hope to see you on the next one.